So are we on the verge of the most turbulent time in human history? Perry Stone takes us through the seven seals of the book of Revelation and the events that are tied to them. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, with so much going on around the world, many are wondering if we are seeing the events of the book of Revelation unfolding before our very eyes. Are the seven seals starting to come to pass? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we're going to find out. But first, joining me on the table is April Simons. You ready to talk about the seven I'm seals? I'm ready, and I love our guest. He's amazing. <laughs> I know, and I learned so much. I do, too. Because Revelation is kind of hard to understand. Yeah, tricky. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Dorothy, it is. how are you? I am doing great. And you always love sitting over there learning, oh, just like me. Yes, yes. You know, and I'm going to believe Jesus. Jesus said, fear not, for I'm yeah, with you. So that's right. I'm, I'm trusting him that's because right. there's so much happening. And Revelation is one of those chapters, <laughs> one of those books, rather. That's right, but we're here, and the Lord can trust us. Yes. Right? Yes. Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? I'm good, and I love our guest. He was one of my dad's closest friends from mm -hmm. when they were little, and he's such a profound expert on the end times. Probably, yes. if I could think of one person, if we could just get him to talk more, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe today. He's a good talker, and he has a lot of good information. Susanna Lamb, I'm so excited. I've um, got both of my girls side by yeah, side right. here. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'm always like looking for the next step. Like, what's next? So yeah. let's find out the next steps. Let's find we're ready out. To go. You ready? <laughs> okay, Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good. And I was thinking, you know, the Bible says if we read and understand Revelation. We are blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful we have teachers and scholars that study it to yeah. help us understand yeah. it. And therefore, we can live a blessed life. Amen, That's good. Sister. That's good. <laughs> well, he is known for his love of Israel and always having a profound understanding of the Bible. He's here to share some of his knowledge with us. Please welcome our dear friend, Perry Stone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here he goes. And Hello. I think you and I have the same congestion, but we're oh. going to make it. We're going to make it. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we, we got them both there. a vitamin shot today, That's so right. they, they yeah. should be good. Look out. They should be good. I'm on fire. That's right. Well, you know, the book of Revelation talks about a book or scroll with seven seals on it. And as each one is opened, major events start happening. Given that there is such turmoil in the world currently, are we seeing those things come to pass? Well, Perry's here to help us dive deeper into these seals what the Bible reveals about them, and more about the succession of events that coincide with them. So for people who don't know, and they're watching, and they're like, okay, what are the seven seals? Let's give them a basic on the okay. apocalypse. First okay. of all, when you hear the word apocalypse, it is the unveiling of something concealed. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation is without a doubt the most difficult book of the Bible to understand. I think everybody on the table would agree. Mm -hmm. And it's because of symbolism. Yeah. Why didn't God just say that this dragon is the devil without using the symbol of a dragon? Mm -hmm. Or this woman travailing in the sky, giving birth to a man-child, why didn't he just say this is Israel? And here's the reason why. John was a political prisoner on the Isle of Patmos when he wrote the book of Revelation. Right. He was a threat to Emperor Domitian. The emperor put him in a pot of oil to kill him, and he didn't die. Mm. And he ended up on the Isle of Patmos. And the reason Domitian did it is there was a rumor in the early church going around, this is in the last chapter of John's gospel, that John would still be living when the King Messiah returned. So Domitian is threatened by the idea that this King Messiah could come and take his place. If he can kill John, he's going to prove that the, that was a lie. Well, right. Of course, the early church had the theory wrong. Mm -hmm. because Jesus did not say, John, you're going to live to see my coming. He said to Peter, what is it to you if he lives to see my coming? Right. That's in John, the last chapter yeah. of John. Let's go back to the book. So what John wrote, the, way, the, the reason he concealed it is chapter 17 and 18 talks about mystery Babylon. History reveals that the Jews would talk about Rome in a negative way, but conceal it by using the word Babylon. If John would have put in there that Rome would one day be destroyed, the Roman emperor would have burnt the scroll 
and never let him take it off the island. So can you imagine when they come to pick up John, he's got this okay. scroll and they're saying, what have you written? And it's a dragon and a beast and a woman with pregnancy. They're not guy. threatened by that. They're, they right. say, this guy's nuts. <laughs> I mean, really, okay, yeah. so wow. God, God protected the book by putting symbolism. Gotcha. Part two, the symbolism is interpreted by the Old Testament. Everything you see in that scripture of the book of Revelation, if you'll go to the Old Testament, you'll find the original symbol. For example, the serpent in the garden represents Satan, and in Revelation, the serpent is Satan. So the Old Testament reveals the symbolism. Here's the third part. And what I'm about to tell people might be the most significant part of understanding the book of Revelation. Jesus has three positions, prophet, priest, and king. Those are the same three positions that King David had. He's called the son of David. He was a prophet on earth. He said a prophet is without honor in his own country. He has been a high priest in heaven for about 2,000 years. Yeah. But he has to transfer as king. He has to move from the position of priest to king. And I'm getting to those seven sealed books here, but you have to get the foundation right. first. Yeah. It won't make sense if yeah. you don't. So the Bible calls Jesus after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the first king and priest of the Most High God that Abraham met in Genesis chapter 14. So he was a king, but he was also a priest. The Bible makes that clear. No man except Melchizedek was ever a king and priest. You were either a king mm. or you were a priest. But Jesus is king and priest. Now, here's the, here's the point. He is now ever living in heaven to make intercession for us. He is the high priest of the profession of our faith. He is forgiving sins. He is defeating sin and death in the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. When the Lord returns for the church and the church is removed, and I believe that's in chapter four of the book of Revelation, we assemble in heaven. You in, believe in the rapture of the church. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, pre-tribulation rapture. Yes. Very strong. Yes. And so when we arrive there, we are singing in heaven, you have redeemed us out of every nation, kindred, mm -hmm. tongue, and people. That's not angels singing, right. like some people say. Us is the church. The church is not mentioned again after chapter 3 in the book of Revelation. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. But watch what happens. Jesus has to transfer from priest to king. And the book of Revelation is showing you how he's doing it. Wow. All right? Does that make sense? Everybody got that? Yeah. Everybody raise your hand and say, I got it. Got it. Okay, good. Y'all are good. Now, <laughs> let's, let's go. And if you have a question, Joan, you can ask me. So let's watch the progress here. Let's prove this to people. Revelation chapter 1, Jesus has on a white garment with no crown on his head. That is a high priest garment on the day of atonement, the linen garment. He's the high priest. Mm -hmm. When you come to the middle of Revelation in chapter 10, no, chapter 14, he is there with one gold crown on his head. When you come to Revelation 19, which is at the end of the tribulation, he has many crowns on his head. Um, then he comes back in Revelation 19 as King of Kings and Lord, Lord of Lords. Lords. So why, how has he been able to move from the high priest of heaven to the king who's going to rule on earth for a thousand years? And the answer is the seven sealed book. Oh. Now, what is the seven sealed book? The seven sealed book is mentioned in the very early part of the book of Revelation. And John, after he sees this multitude worshiping, he says, I looked and saw on the right side of him that sat upon the throne a book, and it would actually be more like, more like a scroll, mm -hmm. sealed with seven seals written on the inside and on the outside. Now, the first thing I do when I read something like that, that I say, okay, what is this about? Is I will go to the Old Testament and see, did anybody ever see a scroll that looked like that? And I want to read this verse to you. It's in Ezekiel 2, chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. When I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was written therein. He spread it before me. It was written within and without. Look at this. Mm. It's written within and without. And there was written therein lamentation, mourning, and woe. So Ezekiel sees a scroll written within and without that has judgments and lamentations and woe. Now let's go, let's look at this. This gets really crazy. It just really does. Why does it have seven seals? You ever thought about it? Mm. Answer, how many churches are addressed in the book of Revelation? Seven. seven. Why seven? Because those seven are significant in that they represent seven church ages, seven, some people call it dispensations, of time that the church will go through from the time it was birthed to the, and the last church, by the way, last church age is the lukewarm church. <gasps> Does that sound familiar? Ooh, wow. Now this is where it gets crazy. And I want everybody to follow me here because this gets a little deep, but it's so exciting. 
it was common for a emperor to take his will of his estate and put seven seals on it. Now, if you want to see one, go to the Israeli Museum and you'll see a scroll that was found with seven seals. They take the scroll, they write the information, they roll it up, then they take seven pieces of leather and tie it, and then I'm going to take this ring off. This is just a ring with an emblem on it. Uh, they take their ring, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven of us at this table. Wow. Okay, all right. <laughs> if all of you have a signet ring in the Old Testament time, let's say our, someone has passed away who's a very wealthy person, or, and, and before they pass away, they make their will. Okay, what we do is I represent the family. I know the family. We all know the family. We take our symbol of our ring and we impress it on that seal. You come and do the second string with, and you do the third, you do seven. In order for that will, that will to be opened, you have to have the person that wears that ring present mm. to match the seal. Oh. So in other words, it's almost like a protection of the document. You were here when it was sealed. Yes, let's see. That matches. And then you break that first seal. You bring the next ring. And the rings are handed down. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they disappear. The rings are handed down from father to son. So why does God seal it with seven seals? Here's a good pre-tribulation revelation. Ready? The seven churches that he spoke to and their pastors have to be present for those seals to be broken. Mm because the message of the book was to seven churches. The resurrection is when the dead in Christ, which would be the seven churches, okay. their pastors, Marcus, Hank, all of our good friends, all caught up together, right, to meet the Lord in the air. When we all get to heaven, that's when the seal is broken. That's my point. Okay. And that's why you have that multitude before that that yeah. are praising God, saying you have redeemed us mm -hmm. out of every nation, kindred, tongue, so and person. So are you going to go through the seven seals well, for us? Well, what I want to do is I want to show you... Uh, something about four of them, okay? okay? So, so Can what, you tell us where we are yeah. well, on the seals? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you that... Susie's up here going, yeah. I'm going to yeah. tell <laughs> you that in my opinion, now there are people that would differ with me, they have not been broken because the first one is a man on a white horse. It is not Jesus, by the way. Jesus comes back on a white horse in chapter 19 mm -hmm. that has a crown and he's going forth conquering and to conquer and he has a bow. Now we assume there's arrows with that bow but then there's no mention, mention of them in particular. Mm -hmm. So as though he's coming as a person of peace. Only emperors or generals rode on white horses. So the imagery there is a leader of an empire. Is that the Antichrist? That's the yeah. Antichrist. And remember, Jesus comes on a white horse. Antichristos or Antichrist is against Christ. Right. But so he tries he, to mimic him. He's, uh, he's a mimicker and he, now there is a false prophet, it's a separate person in chapter 13 of Revelation, who is a religious leader forming a global religion with the Antichrist. Mm, but right. the Antichrist is military. Who can make war against him? Over and over again, wow. who can make war, war, war? So he's going forth to what? Conquering and to conquer. And I can tell you on the book of Daniel, he has 10 kings and he overthrows three of them, which is in your Bible, Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia, three countries in the northern part of Africa. And then he puts his leaders in as over there, over top of those leaders. So that's the first part of the tribulation period. So you're saying that we can't, we're not going to see that first seal because the church will already be gone. If we believe that in, the, the pre in a pre-tribulation rapture, the, the signing of that, we can actually be here when the Antichrist is present and right. when the wars are breaking out. We could still be here then. But it's very clear that that first seal introduces the white horse. Now, the second one is red. It's real interesting that you have nations whose emblems are red. You have the Russia, Russia uh, you have red China, isn't that interesting? Yeah. You have China's emblem being a dragon. You have in Revelation, the great red dragon. And I think there could be a link there yeah. with the kings of the east, which would be the area of China. When that horse comes, it says that the rider on that... And this is the second seal. This is the second seal. ...will take peace away from the earth, and he will be given a great sword. And that great word there is a mega sword, a large sword. So there will be a lot of fighting in wars when that second one comes. Now remember, the first one is conquering. So how do you conquer? In war. Mm -hmm. So he is actually conquering nations. So this is a wartime. Now I've heard people say that when the Antichrist comes, he brings peace. There is a treaty signed after the war of Gog of Magog in Ezekiel 30 and 39. And it tells you there, you want to hear something strange? 
it says they burn weapons for seven years. Wow. And in Daniel 9, 27, the tribulation is seven years in length. Well, so do the seals coincide with the seven years? In other words? The, the it, yes. In other words, it, 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 it's not necessarily a seven years of seals being broken. Okay. But that first 42 months is when these particular seals are broken. Because when you get to the second series, there's bowl judgment and trumpet judgments that are set up later on. So it's a, it's a division of a 42 months and 42 months. The white horse, the That's red the first horse. That's the first one. Is, is, it, okay, it's, it's peace taken from the earth. Now imagine, okay. no peace on the earth. The, the th third horse. Is the black horse. And there is food rationing. And this is important that you understand this verse. If you take the verse of the King James translation where it talks about the wheat and the barley and you add up the cost of what they're, the, let's say the money they were using then, it, this, is, this is where it's going to be. A loaf of bread will cost you one day's work. And you can see just how with the war in Russia and Ukraine and the sanctions and so forth, how it disrupts grain mm -hmm. and food. And just, and we, got, we have food in America, but prices keep going up. So imagine when this rider comes out, there's going to be extreme famine. Well, now, and it's already happening like across America, all these farms that are being destroyed. Totally. I mean, and burnt and just True. crazy stuff happening. And it's already being predicted that there's food shortage is coming. Yeah, and, and you have droughts that are affecting entire nations as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. All right, the fourth horse is, it says, is pale. Now, this is interesting because I pointed this out. Uh, in Revelation, I'm, I'm gonna turn over here real quick. Come and see, the, and, and you have the pale horse, and that word is a Greek word for green. Because mm -hmm. pale, you know, pale would be like a white pale color. It's not that yeah. color, it's, it's a green color. Wow. And it's always kind of like, put with someone like who's sick. Sickly. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, sickly. That's exactly right. That that color is connected to a sickly color. And, and, and all right, so then it says that, that that particular horse is one that you have sword, hunger, and death. So that's the fourth one. So as he's breaking these seals, you have to have the witnesses, which are the seven churches and their pastors present. And that, you know, we, and we do that based on the pattern of the Roman Empire and the emperor's seven seals in his will, so right? now things are getting worse with each seal. It, it progressively, one thing leads to another, yeah. okay? Now, he opened the fifth, he, then he goes for the next seal. And uh, this is real interesting because he, because he talks about in the fifth seal, he saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the testimony of Christ and the word of God. And it was said to them that they should rest for a season till their fellow servants be killed. Many people take that passage and say, well, the church is still on earth because people are being killed on earth. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. You have to understand the throne room of God to understand that verse. This table, let's say this table is the throne room. Massive, okay? Here's God's throne. It's a crystal. You can see through it. And John is standing on that floor looking through a crystal and he sees under the altar and there's a golden altar before God's throne and he sees people under this altar and they're being slain on earth and they're coming into this paradise of heaven. Now remember, at the coming of the Lord, the dead in Christ rose, rose mm -hmm. and they came with him to get their resurrected body. Right. We are on top the throne room floor. Right. We are on top the floor with the 24 elders worshiping God. Okay, we are already have our resurrected bodies. So these are the people that didn't take the mark of the beast. Who are, are dying murdered. in the tribulation period yeah. because they realize I have missed this and the only way. And there will be, we know there's going to be martyrs during that seven years. It's going to be... It's going to be a nightmare to many. live during that, but there's going to be many that will be. Beheaded. You know, I was watching Perry Stone on Table Talk. Talking and what about he this. said was true. Right. No, it's and really going to happen. And I'm not going to take that mark. That's really, yeah. that's really, my hair's standing up. Yeah. Just, do you, can you feel that? I mean, yeah. really, because <laughs> if you think about it, that is so scary. You have, and I want to talk to people, you have such an opportunity yes. to follow the Lord now. You got Christian television, gospel music, you get Bibles in Go America. Go evangelist. At least. Tell, yeah. Go evangelist. Con yeah, and churches all over the place. Yes. It is not difficult for you to follow the Lord. And yet, if you refuse to follow him, the Bible says this, uh, if, 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 you can't, if you can't run with the footman, how will you contend with the horses? Mm. In other words, if you fall when times are, are good, 
How are you going to make it when times are tough? And I would encourage somebody, you need to get your heart right with the Lord and not just see, well, maybe I'll make it. Just pray yeah. a little simple prayer. Let them yeah. we'll repeat after you because there's some of you are like, okay, I want to pray. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. I want yeah. you to pray this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm away from you. I'm away from you. And I know, and I, know. I must believe in you I must believe to, be you saved. to be saved. So I believe, so I believe. you're the Son, you're the Son of God. You died for my sins and you can save me. Save me. So I repent of my sins. Of my sins. Cleanse me Cleanse through me. your precious blood. Your precious come, blood. Into come into my life. Help me to follow you to the follow remaining you. days of my life. Of my In, life. Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mean that from your heart. Amen. 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 Well, you prayed that, it. You ooh. prayed it. Yes. Let us know. Call that number on the screen. Let us know. I prayed the Amen. prayer and I'm going to send you a free book. Praise called God. Now what? Okay, continue on. That was important. There were some of you, it was just your moment. It was your it moment. Was just your moment. That's exactly right. And the Holy Spirit has been dealing with you yes. and you prayed and everything is about to change. Now we're on the fifth seal, the martyrs. Okay, so the martyrs are those dying in the tribulation and many others are going to have to be slain before they are able to come mm-hmm. out of that paradise. And that's another, that's another story. All right. There's another seal. Now, now we've that's got not this. not the way you want to go. Can I just say, no, there's you want to pray now. Yeah. You don't there's want to wait go way. through the tribulation period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But many people will have heard the gospel and have missed it. Yeah. And yeah. they'll know the only way is by death. Mm. And that's what the scripture identifies. All right. The sixth seal, great earthquake. Again, the word there is a mega earthquake, meaning a, we would say a monster sized earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood. And that doesn't mean the moon turns into literal blood. It's the effect of like a volcanic. When this earthquake happens, there's these massive volcanic eruptions. There's ash in the sky darkening the sun. And this is clear when you keep reading it. Mm. And the moon turning into blood. I mean, you can, you can watch the moon change. It's mm-hmm. with the atmosphere, what is in the atmosphere. So the moon turns a red color. The, 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 there's a part of the world that the, the sun has become completely darkened. And he says, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Now, this is some type of meteorites. It could be, it, it, later on, there's a crashing of an asteroid that may hit the atmosphere and it actually explodes in the atmosphere, which we know happens. So this is what we call the cosmic activity that Jesus warned about in Matthew 24 because he said that the, the stars would fall from heaven and the powers of heaven would be shaken. And this is a real, real, now, I want, you, I, want you, I want to read this verse to you. The kings of the earth and the great men, the rich and chief captains, and the mighty men and every bondman, every freeman, hid themselves in the den and in the rocks of the mountains. And here's the interesting part. And they say to the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the wrath of him that sits on the throne. For the day of his wrath is coming, who shall be able to stand? So let's go back to the seventh seal book. Um, And of course, the seventh seal is the introducing of the next judgments. Mm. Okay, every seventh seal, every seventh vial, every seventh trumpet is the transition to the next thing. And that's why you don't see a judgment on the seventh seal. Again, if we look at this in chronological, and I'm going only by the chronological order of what you read in Revelation, this is the first 42 months. Okay. Th- these are things you see there for, because, and I don't want to overdo this, but the first part is the wrath of the lamb, and the second part is the wrath of God. Mm, so there's yeah. two levels of wrath here. One is the lamb, and the lamb honestly is pouring out. If you look at this, if you really read the book of Revelation and say, why is this happening? It's because the world shed the blood of righteous people. They killed the prophets God sent. They killed the righteous people. And even Mystery Babylon is destroyed because of the blood she shed of righteous they people. killed the babies. Yes, yeah. uh, absolutely. She, look, the blood, Abel's blood cried out. Shedding innocent blood, blood has a voice. I do not know how it works or how it happens. And after a while, it reaches up to God and God says, the cup of iniquity is full, that's the phrase he uses, then I pour out my grapes of wrath or my winepress of the wrath on the earth. So grace is not here during that seven years. There is, let me say this, there are people being saved, but it's it's sheer faith. There's two witnesses that are witnessing. There's 145,000 Jewish men that are sealed with the seal of God, but it is not going to be the same because it says only he who now restrains the Antichrist We'll continue to restrain we until he's taken. Is the, is the church restraining? The church right now? filled with the power of the Holy Spirit preaching Ooh. the word yeah. is the only restraining power and against the enemy. Because the Bible says that we're the salt and light of the earth. Exactly. And salt is what and is the preservative. And if the light goes out and the salt loses its savor, savor yeah. everything gets trampled. But you know what, Perry? Like, there are people watching. You don't even realize 
the presence of God that is in that room where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Hey. I remember I interviewed someone that, that, that died and went to hell, and they said the worst part of it was the absence of the presence of God that they didn't even know oh my. was on the earth. Ooh. So you don't even realize the presence of God is with us, and he's calling you, and he's saying, I love you, I have a plan for your life. But when this happens... That's not going to be here. It's, it's, let me say this. I want to say, and I know in parts of the world there's persecution against a lot of people, and it's hard serving the Lord in some countries. But if you live in America, yeah. this is the easiest generation to follow the Lord there's ever been. Oh, yeah. Our struggles are against the flesh. Our struggles are against attitudes. Our struggles are against bitterness. That's what Christians and complacency struggle with. Complacency. Yeah. Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. There's our battles. Just for people who don't know or maybe haven't, study the Word of God or even the book of Revelation. Let's take us through the timeline. Mm -hmm. The next big event will be the rapture of the church. Okay. What, the marriage supper of the Lamb? Let's go through this real quick. Chapter 2 and 3 is the church age. Church age ends at the rapture. Rapture is in chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Read that later. Then we all appear in heaven where there's this time of worshiping the Lamb of God. Then we see that the seals are being broken. The judgments are coming on the earth. There's a lot of activity happening on earth that the book book, book talks about. Mm -hmm. Then for us in heaven, we'll come to about mid-trip point, and we come to what's called the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, where we're judged for our works and our rewards are given. And that's chapter 11, verse 18. And then after that takes place, then Jesus is involved with focusing on Israel, the 144,000 Jews, the battles of the Antichrist. And then we come to the last year. It's the last year of the seven-year tribulation. The marriage supper of the Lamb is a major supper, and I can prove it lasts for one year. This is not some... Susie let's, let's, thought it was seven. She's going to be disappointed. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's, One year. it's, it's Shabbat dinner. Okay. Every seventh day is Shabbat. The Jews have Shabbat dinner from six to six. And so what happens is when you were married in the Old Testament, get this, if you were married in the Old Testament, you took off work for a year. Right. You didn't have to work for a year. That's amazing. There's so your, so there's the your pattern. The supper of the Lamb. Is one year. And, and at the end of that, we return with Christ. On the white to, horse. Yes, to come back to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. For a thousand years. years. And there's a lot of verses and on that. And that's another People whole said, show, the, the whole millennial. Well, oh, that's my. a thousand years. I'm so excited. And I, I said this to somebody the other day. Remember that song we used to sing in church? Mm-hmm. Satan will be bound a, a thousand, thousand years. years we'll have no tempter then. then. We're After from the same Jesus school system. shall come back to earth again. <laughs> yes, we a all Duffy remember Street. it. <laughs> well, we're, we are at a time, as always, we talk about topics like this today to encourage you. Uh, Christ is our hope. He is our salvation. He loves you. I don't care what background you come from, who you are, what religion you are, what mistakes you've made. I want to tell you something. God loves you. And all you have to do is reach out to him to say, God, I need you. And he'll meet you right where you are. So when we talk about the events revealed to us about the end times, it should stir, again, hope that the Lord will is going to be returning soon. If you're watching today, you don't, again, have a personal relationship with the Lord. Maybe you prayed that prayer earlier. Uh, I just want to encourage you to open your heart to the things of God. That's a toll-free number on the screen. We love to pray for you. It's our privilege to do so and uh, just encourage you. I want to thank Perry for joining us at the table for resources or to find out more about his ministry. You can visit him online at perrystone.org. And let us know what you thought about today's discussion by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And you know what? I always say this. I say God is big enough to reveal himself to you. You don't even have to trust what we are saying. You can ask him about it. I trust him enough to reveal himself that the things that we are saying are truth. That's the God that we serve. He loves you so much. Thank you for watching. We love you. Be encouraged today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.